Hello YouTube, I'm Kay Senior, but you can call me Kay. And today I wanna to talk about the truth about becoming a web developer or web designer. But first of all, why should you listen to me? Well, I've been in this industry for many, many years. I've been doing this ever since I can remember, and I've seen so many trends come and go. I really wanna give you the ins and outs of what it takes to become a web developer or a web designer nowadays. I could talk about a lot of stuff, but I'm going to focus on three crucial points. So I'm gonna to try to keep this video short, but if you wanna make this video worth your while, make sure you watch until the end. And my first point is that for web developers and web designers, nowadays, there are two worlds living side by side. Let me explain. So the first world is a custom development, custom design world. And usually this is the world of bigger companies. It could be big corporate companies or big studios. So for example, if Nike wants to release a new website for a new product, unless they internalize the skills, most of the time they're gonna ask a big studio that they work with. So in those big studios, someone is going to take care of the wireframes, the UI, the UX, and there's going to be a team of developers, there's going to be someone at marketing. Basically, it's a full team. So these types of websites or web apps are gonna cost, I don't know, from 100,000 to sky's the limit, really. So you see the budget they need because they need to pay a lot of people in the team. And when you got that kind of budget, then you can start hiring custom developers. In other words, this is more for high paying clients of a company that can internalize a full team of designers and developers. Now, the second world is the world of smaller companies and solopreneurs. So as you may be aware, everybody and their mom wants to be an entrepreneur. And that's great actually, because you know, you've never seen the time like this before. But the truth is those people, usually they start small, they have a limited budget or no budget. So it's gonna be hard for them to hire a custom web developer or custom web designer. So usually in this world, either they're gonna work with a freelancer that's gonna charge less, or they are going to revert to DIY solutions like WordPress, Squarespace, not to mention Wix and the likes. And then when they realize that these are only tools and that it takes much more to create a professional website, then they might turn to a freelancer or to a small studio. And in this world, those freelancers and small studios, they're gonna work with systems like WordPress, WordPress as the biggest market share, but it could be Webflow, it could be Squarespace, and basically they're gonna have a foundation they can start from so they can charge less. They're gonna buy templates, that kind of thing. Now, to be transparent, I told you there are two worlds, but actually there's a third one in between. So this world, as it says, is in between custom code or custom design and templates. And basically the idea is that you're gonna start from a foundation, but you're still gonna use your craft. So let's speak the example of WordPress. You could actually still do the front end coding, use CSS, JavaScript, and you could build a custom theme, or you could use a theme builder and then add your own code, your own JavaScript. So basically you have a nice foundation with a lot of plugins and you don't have to start from scratch, but you can still use your craft you can then charge lower than the big studios, but higher than the people who are just gonna buy a template and slap the client's logo on it. And if you are a backend developer, there's a ton of money to be made with developing custom plugins for those platforms. And then after the different worlds we can evolve in, there are three location aspects that define how much we can make and how much we enjoy our work. First, if you live in a big city or around a big city, then there is a lot more competition, but also there is a lot more demand. So if you know how to level up your skills, you can really make crazy amounts of cash. And I mean it, you only have to Google it or just go here on YouTube and just watch how much web developers and web designers can make in those big cities. So as a web developer or web designer in those areas, you can probably make a comfortable living in an unsecure world. Also, one of the added benefits is that if you're not happy where you work, given the fact that there is so much demand, you can pretty easily switch employers if you feel like you're gonna be treated better elsewhere. Now, on the other hand, just as it's super easy for you to find a new employer, it's as easy for an employer to let you go if you underperform because a lot of competition, a lot of demand. So they can pick someone else. So that can raise your stress levels. What's more, if you have any kind of ambition, be prepared to learn how to navigate your way through the corporate ladder if you wanna progress financially and also if you wanna take on more responsibilities. Now, if you work in a remote area or maybe a rural area, of course, there's gonna be less competition, but also less demand. 
So the consequence is that you won't get paid as much as you would get paid in a big urban area. And also it can generate more stress because your employer knows that if they let you go, it's going to be harder for you to find a new job. Now, on the other hand, because there is less competition, if you specialize in any area of web development or web design, then you may get the better job. You may get the better paid job than if you were just, just a random web developer or web designer. So it's always a good idea to try to specialize in one thing. So you can be a generalist, but then you can try to specialize in one area. So as a developer, you could specialize on React. And as a web designer, you could specialize in UX design. What you need to do is research your market and see what's needed. And if you do that, and if your specialty is in demand, not only can you thrive locally, but you can also do remote work, but we'll talk about that later. Also, living outside of the big city centers can also mean that you have a better quality of life. See, I see people in New York or LA with crazy salaries. When you look at the salaries, I'm like, man, am I doing the right thing here? But on the other hand, when you look at what they have to pay for rent or their mortgage, for their cars, food, and basically everything they need for day-to-day -day life, you realize that it's so crazy expensive that even if you live in a remote area, you may have a much better quality of life. And even in terms of money, you make less, but you spend less. So at the end of the day, what matters is, are you happy? Are you enjoying your work? Are you enjoying your life, basically? And that's why I decided to leave big city centers, big cities, and just move to a tropical island. Because at this point in my life, I valued the quality of life much more than the money I could make, the stress I could get. So it really depends. And I used to love being in big cities. I could never see myself living outside of a city. But then you get more experience, you travel, you visit other things, and you realize that the things that you used to love maybe five years ago, well, maybe you don't love them so much. So when you realize that you really need to Ask yourself, what do you want and what's your priority? So yeah, I don't make as much as if I lived in New York City or in LA, but then again, I don't need to. Now, there is a third location option and it's been more and more popular these last years, especially with what has been going on in the world. And that's remote work and or digital nomads. So if you've ever been working in co-working spaces, you know that you meet all types of people there. And about three weeks to a month ago, I met this guy that works remotely for a big studio, I think in LA, and we're in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So basically he's in the co-working space and every three months he told me like he switched countries. So I don't know how many countries he's done yet, but every three months he's gonna move to another country. Basically he's doing a world travel tour while working and he's getting paid a lot of money. And he doesn't seem to be working that many hours. So that looks like the dream job, right? Well, for most people, yes, it is. And you know, to travel the world, it definitely is. And when I was getting started, if I had been offered such an opportunity, of course I would have taken it. That would have been a dream job. And even today, it's like a dream job. But depending on your experience and where you're at in life, you may be drawn to two different paths. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Now, on top of the various worlds that you can evolve in and the different location options, there are a couple of paths that you can take. And in your lifetime, maybe you'll take both, maybe you'll take only one. And the first path is the mighty nine to five. Now, in my opinion, this is the path you should start with because it's going to teach you how to evolve in a corporate environment, how to structure your processes and how to apply a proven methodology. As a web developer or web designer in a team, you need to report to someone and learn how to work with other people in your team. Because trust me, coding or designing is just the tip of the iceberg. And the truth is, you need to develop other skills if you want to survive in a corporate environment. You're going to have to deal with the stress of completing your projects and make your employer happy. You're going to have to deal with your direct boss and his boss and their boss, so a lot of bosses. You're going to have to deal with your colleagues and even maybe with clients. So if you think that you're just gonna code or design, you're in for a treat. Now we're gonna talk about the second path in a moment, but I just want you to know that some people choose to jump straight into the second path. And in my opinion, that's a mistake because if you don't go through the mighty nine to five, it may prevent your future success. Now sure, there are exceptions, but these are people that would succeed no matter what. People like Michael Jordan or Elon Musk. For the rest of us, it's better to gain some experience and then with that experience, you can turn that into literally gold in your hands. Now, the second path is to be self-employed or to create your own company, your own studio. 
because yes, there is a difference between being self-employed and creating your own company. When you are self-employed, basically you are working for yourself. You are your own boss and you can be ruthless with yourself. Plus you have many, many bosses because each client is going to be your boss, even if for a limited time. So if you're choosing that path because you don't want any boss, you're going to be so disappointed because you're going to get so many more bosses. Now, when you build your own company, even if at the beginning you're going to work in the business, the idea is that eventually you will work on the business and then you will start leveraging other people's time and skills to create profits and make a living. Whereas the freelancer is trading time for money. But that's a debate for another video. Now, in both cases, you will need to learn how to get new clients. And I've already covered that in a few videos on the channel. So make sure you go and watch if you want to know the best strategies that I use to find new clients. Being my own boss is the path that I chose because I already done the 1995 and it was a time for me that I wanted to start pushing my own ideas and control my own hours. But this video is not about me, it's about you. So I want to give you a few tips to help you along your journey. One, ask yourself this question. Do you have enough experience at this point and be honest with yourself? Now, if the answer is yes, you can move on to the next tip. If the answer is no, or if you're not sure, one thing I advise you to do is to create your portfolio first. Now, don't believe that you need to study for four or five years to become a developer because that's a thing of the past. Sure, you can do it, but if you want to get yourself into debt to learn something that you could learn in six to 12 months, in four to five years, then be my guest. But if you really want to make it, you have a limited amount of time, you can start learning online. There are a ton of free resources or cheap resources, but trust me, there are also free resources where you can learn your craft. So there's never been a better time than now to actually become a web developer or a web designer, because trust me, back in the day, it was with books and CD-ROMs, and I ain't kidding. Now, once you've learned the basics, because yes, you don't need to learn everything, just learn the basics, and then start creating your portfolio with three projects. Three projects is more than enough. So all you need to do is go learn on those platforms and then apply what you've learned, create real fake projects. I've covered that on the channel also, but a word about that later. But basically create your portfolio because trust me, if I had to hire a web developer or a web designer, I wouldn't really care what degree or diploma they have. What I would care about is what they can do. So by seeing the portfolio, I would know what I can hire them from because not everybody needs a senior developer. A lot of companies need junior developers or junior web designers. Tip number two, once you get enough experience, you may want to reassess your priorities. And one, you may want to go where you're best treated. And that means if you can get better money and better conditions of work with another employer, it may be time to switch. And two, reassess where you want to live. Because maybe two or three years ago, you used to love living in that urban city, buzzing urban area, but maybe now you want to live next to the beach or to the mountain. So now that you got experience and you can choose who you want to work for and where you want to work, you may want to reassess this at this time because money is not everything. If you have a lot of money, but you hate where you live, it's not going to cut it, is it? So choose wisely. Or maybe you can do like that guy in the co-working space. Maybe you can find a remote employer and then you can travel the world. Tip number three, once you get enough experience and you feel like being there, done that, and you want to push your own ideas and control your own hours, maybe it's now the time to become a freelance web designer or web developer, or maybe you want to build your own studio. Now, luckily in this day and age, there is a ton of information if you want to start your own business and make the big jump. Now, I made the big jump and Thinking back about it, the only question that comes to my mind is, why did I not do it sooner? Now, if you want to know how I became a web developer in three months, make sure you watch the video appearing on screen right now. I'm Casino, I'm the Digital Alchemist, and don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one, and until then, take care and stay safe. Cut! <sighs> I made it.